When we say the phrase good spirits, your mind might conjure up images of things like elves, fawns, and all the rest of the merry band from Elfhelm, but good doesn't always have to be cute and cuddly. Good can also be scary, especially when it comes packaged in the form of a righteous bundle of hellfire that can burn its way through your heart like a bulb of garlic. The Wheel of Flame is one of the few spiritual allies that Guts and his party have that can actually put the fear of hell within demons. That's because it's a manifestation of the fires that burn within that realm and exists for the sole purpose of cleansing the battlefield of all kinds of evil. In this video, we'll take a look at what that wheel is, how it works, what it resembles, and everything in between, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like this video, because all Berserk content flows through this channel, at least the interesting stuff. The God of Woe that leaves battlefields in a crimson rut, Wheel of Flames powers explained. The Wheel of Flames debuted at a time where Team Guts could have really used an assist. The gang was stuck in the holy city of Rattanus trying to get to its harbor so they could set sail for Elfhelm. What was blocking their path? Legions upon legions of demon soldiers and magical beasts that would have sent Guts into berserker mode if they didn't come up with a way to back him up. Serpico was the only one who could fight on his level, to an extent, if he wasn't using the armor, but he needed to stay behind and protect the women and children. The sheer number of Daka and Pishacha assaulting Vertanus that night was so overwhelming that even though Guts did his best not to lose himself to small fries, things nearly got to that point. He had nearly taken out a few score Daka when one of them tried jumping him from above, but that went horribly for the little wretch. Guts impaled him with Dragon Slayer, and when he saw that Shirke's spell was taking too long to conjure help, he decided to risk it all and unleash the Berserker. The helm of the armor started creeping up his back as it raced towards his head, a sign that it was about to take him over. But before that could happen, a gigantic wave of heat washed over both user and artifact. Everyone stood in awe as Shirke summoned a gigantic, ethereal, flaming wheel over her head and promised to burn every evil creature in their path with its power. The spirit called itself the Wheel of Flame, and its job was to be used as an instrument that cleanses battlefields. It possessed a huge cog near the harbor and proceeded to clear out every single Daka and Pashacha within it in a matter of seconds. The Wheel of Flame's spiritual presence was so powerful that when Shirke was possessed by it, her body started to burn thanks to the salamanders she was channeling. These tiny, lizard-like creatures are the fire elementals of the Berserkverse, and the Wheel of Flame uses them to ignite anything in its path, provided it has a decent enough vessel to carry it through. But unlike the flame of the sun or fire from, say, a lightning strike, the wheel's flames originate from human actions. People's use of fire in war, conquest, inquisition, and genocide shaped the flames of the wheel, and this makes it all the more terrifying as a good aligned nature spirit. At least the Lady of the Depths represented a rill that formed the basis for life in the area around it. The wheel had only taken lives, and yet its power and purpose remained good for the most part. It only wished to eradicate evil, and to do that, it needed a willing vessel. Once it had said vessel, it could burn hot enough to cut through highly concentrated beams of water, making them evaporate on contact. It's an incredible feat to burn at that high of a temperature, which it clearly does, considering the leftover Daka corpses turned into charred husks. The Wheel of Flame is clearly meant to be a manifestation of righteous fury and wrath in this world, which is why we find it rather similar to another divine flame that needs to channel itself through a vessel in order to find and punish evil. How Guts nearly killed himself trying to become Berserk's Ghost Rider. If you think about it, the Wheel of Fire and Ghost Rider have a lot in common. They're both flaming entities that like to stamp out evil demons by riding their wheel over them. Sure, Ghost Rider has the advantages of having a proper body, a sick motorcycle, the pen and stare, and a bunch of other cool abilities, but at his core, what he does is use Hellfire to cleanse sin from the world. Of course, the wheel doesn't require you to make a deal with the devil, but an accord needs to be reached between the two communing parties nonetheless. When Shirke locates it within the astral world, she's confused by it at first. That's because it wasn't born from nature, it was born because of humanity, and in many ways, the Wheel of Flame's shrine felt more like purgatory. War, invasion, famine, sieges, these were the reasons that the humans chose to use its power for, and in doing so, they sacrificed a countless number of souls to it. As a result, its power has become so immense that it can rival the infamous Kundalini in strength and scope. It might not have the same powers as Marvel's Spirit of Vengeance, but the Wheel of Flame does the exact same thing as Ghost Rider, minus the gaze that makes you go crazy. Its flames burn so hot that channeling it through a person's body is impossible, so Shirke uses a wheel-shaped wooden structure instead, but that only works on the low-level demons like the Daka and the Pishacha. When Daiba whips out the Kundalini, it becomes clear that using the Wheel of Flame is Guts and Co's only option, because otherwise they would get their heads burnt off. However, using a wooden wheel to channel its power over an entity that controlled an entire bay's worth of elementals would put it at a 
severe disadvantage. The good guys needed to have precise control over the Wheel of Flame long enough for Guts to get through the Kundalini's aqueous body and murder its actual body, so instead of using a wheel, they chose Guts himself to act as the medium. The process was completely devoid of the possibility of things like him getting possessed by demons somehow, but it couldn't shield him from physical harm. It left his entire body burnt and singed like a boar being cooked over a spit, but channeling the Wheel of Flame into Guts' Dragon Slayer totally worked. It didn't melt his face off and leave only bones in its wake, and neither did it target a sinner with its wrath, but for a few brief moments, the Wheel of Flame used its hellfire to scorch the influence of evil from this world, and if that doesn't sound like Johnny Blaze, we don't know what does. As for whether we'll see it again in the series, that depends on the need of the hour. The Wheel of Flame was there for sheer when she needed it during the Corridor of Dreams mission, but she has a much more powerful and personal fire spirit watching over her as well, that being Flora. Though the flame did give us our best glimpse at a what if Guts became Ghost Rider story, it lasted for barely a frame and it was enough to let us know that even that shouldn't have happened. Yet it did, and for that, this wheel forged in hell feels rather grateful, or at least that's what we think he would say. Marvelous Verdict! And that's it for this one. Let us know what you guys think about the Wheel of Flame down in the comments section below. It's an interesting spirit that didn't originate from nature, but it ended up becoming a part of the natural order of things. That's all we got for you guys today, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Berserk content, and we'll see you in the next one. This is Wizard Wheezy signing off for now, but don't forget, keep on struggling, strugglers.